Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I now present to you Horton Hears a Who by Dr. Seuss. On the 15th of May, in the jungle of Newell, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool, he was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys when Horton the elephant heard a small noise. So Horton stopped splashing. He looked towards the sound. That's funny, thought Horton. There's no one around. Then he heard it again, just a very faint yell, as if some tiny person was calling for help. I'll help you, said Horton. But who are you and where? He looked and he looked. He could see nothing there, but a small speck of dust blowing past through the air. I'll say, murmured Horton. I've never heard tell of a small speck of dust that is able to yell. So now what I think, why? I think that there must be someone on top of that small speck of dust, some sort of creature of very small size, too small to be seen by an elephant's eyes. Some poor little person who's shaking with fear that he'll blow into the pool he has no way to steer. I'll just have to save him because after all, a person's a person no matter how small. So gently and using the greatest of care, the elephant stretched his great trunk in the air. He lifted the dust and carried it over and placed it down safe on a very soft clover. Ha! humped a voice. Twas a sour kangaroo, and a young kangaroo in her pouch said, ha! too. Why, that speck is as small as a head on a pen. A person on that? <laughs> Why, there never has been. Believe me, said Horton, I tell you sincerely, my ears are quite keen and I heard him quite clearly. I think that you are a fool, <laughs> laughed the sour kangaroo. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too, you're the biggest blame fool in the jungle of Noel. And the kangaroos plunge in the cool of the pool. What terrible splashing, the elephant frowned. I can't let my very small persons get drowned. I've got to protect them. I'm bigger than they. So he plucked up the clover and hustled away. Should I put this speck down? Horton thought with alarm. If I do, these small persons may come to great harm. I can't put it down, and I won't. After all, a person's a person, no matter how small. Then Horton stopped walking. The speck voice was talking. The voice was so faint he could just barely hear it. Speak up, please, said Horton. He put his ear near it. My friend, came the voice. You're a very fine friend. You've helped all us folks on this dust speck no end. You saved all our houses, our ceilings and floors. You saved all our churches and grocery stores. You mean? Horton gasped. You have buildings there too? My town is called Whoville, for I am a Who, and we Whos are all thankful and grateful to you. And Horton called back to the mayor of the town. You're safe now, don't worry. I won't let you down. But just as he spoke to the mayor of the speck, three big jungle monkeys came up to Horton's neck. The Wilkersham brothers were, came shouting, What a riot! <laughs> this elephant's talking to who's who are not. They snatched Horton's clover. They carried it off to a black-bottomed eagle named Vlad Vatikon. And before the poor elephant could speak, the eagle flew off with the flower in his beak. All that late afternoon and far into the night, that black bottom bird flapped his wings and flashed flight, while Horton chased after him with groans over stones that tattered his toenails and battered his bones and begged, please don't harm my little folks who have as much right to live as us bigger folks do. But far, far beyond him, the eagle kept flapping and over his shoulder, he called back, Quit your yapping. I'll fly the night through. I'm a bird. I don't mind it. And I'll hide this tomorrow where well, you'll never find it. And on 656, the next morning, he did it. It sure was a terrible place that he hid it. 
He let the small clover drop somewhere inside a great clutch of clovers a hundred miles wide. Find that, sneered the bird, but I think you would fail. <laughs> and he left with a flip of his black bottom tail. I'll find it, cried Horton. I'll find it or bust. I shall find my friends on that small speck of dust. And clover by clover by clover with care, he picked and he searched near them and called, are you there? Then on through the afternoon, hour after hour, till he found them at last on that three millionth flower. My friends, cried the elephant, do tell me, do tell. Are you safe? Are you sound? Are you whole? Are you well? From down on the speck came the voice of the mayor. We've really had trouble, much more than our share. Oh, Horton, please, pleaded the voice of the mayors. You'll stick by us who's while we're making repairs? Of course, Horton answered. Of course I will stick. I'll stick by you small folks through thin and through thick. Humped, humped a voice. For almost two days you've been running wild and insisting on chatting with persons who never existed and I'm here to state, snapped the big kangaroo, that your silly nonsensical game is all through. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me too. With the help of the Wilkersham brothers and dozens of Wilkersham uncles and Wilkersham cousins and Wilkersham in-laws, whose help I've engaged, you're going to be roped and you're going to be caged. <laughs> mayor, Mayor, Horton called, Mr. Mayor, you've got to prove now that you really are there. And his people cried loudly, they cried out with fear, we are here, we are here, we are here, we are here. The elephant smiled. That was clear as a bell. You kangaroo surely heard that very well. I heard no small voices and you didn't either. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me neither. Grab him they shouted, and cage that big dope, lasso his stomach with 10 miles of rope. <laughs> Horton fought back as they started to haul him into his cage, but he managed to call to the mayor, don't give up, I believe in you all. A person's a person no matter how small. The mayor grabbed a tom-tom, he started smacking it, and all over Whoville they hooped up a racket. They rattled tin kettles, they beat on brass pans, on garbage pail tops, and on old cranberry cans. And Horton called back, I can hear you just fine, but the kangaroo's ears aren't as strong quite as mine. Are you sure every who down in Whoville is working? Quick, look through your town. If, quick, look through your town. Is there anyone shirking? Through the town rushed a mayor from east and to west and everyone seemed to be doing their best. And just as he felt that he was getting nowhere and almost about to give up in despair, he suddenly burst through the doors and that mayor discovered one shirker, quite hidden away in Fairfax apartment, apartment 12J. A very small, very small shirker named Jojo was standing, just standing and bouncing a yo-yo not making a sound, not a yip, not a chirp. And the mayor rushed inside and grabbed the young twerp. And he climbed with the lad up the Eiffelberg Tower. This, cried the mayor, is your town's darkest hour. So open your mouth, lad, for every voice counts. Thus he spoke as he climbed. Then they got up to the top and the lad cleared his throat and shouted, <clears throat> Yeah! And that yacht, that one small extra yacht put it over. Finally, at last, from the, that speck on the clover, their voices were heard. They rang out clear and the elephant smiled. Do you see what I mean? They prove they are persons, no matter how small. And their whole world was saved by the smallest of all. How true, yes, how true 
said the big kangaroo. And from now on, you know what I'm going planning to do. From now on, I'm planning to protect them with you. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me too. From summer in the, from sun in the summer, from rain when it's fallish, I'm going to protect them no matter how smallish. The end.